morning. We meet in another car vlog. It's a sunny day, but a bit cloudy as well. I just had my car wash. I think sometimes once in two weeks, especially the rain can just come and when you drive in the rain, the car really becomes very dirty because most roads in Sabah are very dusty, not swept properly, not maintained properly. Um, but that's life. But um, yeah, I had a wonderful time of uh, reading from the book of uh, Isaiah. I think from chapter 50, 51, 52, even 53, you know, the famous uh, chapter. But I think especially 51 and 52, the Lord really uh, spoke to me. Uh, I was struck that a couple of times he told the prophet, you know, speaking in the name of God, said that do not fear the torment of man or the fury of man. Do not fear disgrace by man, you know. You, you may be disgraced uh, for the sake of righteousness, for man opposed to you or opposed to God's will. And um, so that really struck me uh, powerfully and I had this marking uh, 19, uh, 2014 uh, more than seven years ago I marked that passage you know, do not fear the disgrace of man uh, but basically the fury of God you know, what we should fear is the disgrace of God you know, God disown us or, or judge us or condemn us uh, that will be the ultimate judgment So, and then I also, uh, sometimes we look at the numbers, so, so-called vast majority, and you have the saying, I, I think it's probably Isaiah 51, if I'm not mistaken, that when I chose Abraham, he was only one, you know, only one person, and God could make him many. God made him father of many nations, many kings, nations, and peoples. That's uh, quite remarkable. So I read and read and read med meditatively. And then even in Fifty-two, uh, you who seek God of fifty-one, seek His righteousness, and not many people do that really. I, especially during the times of pandemic, coming to almost two years, which is a really a refinement of saringan in Malay, that we get tested whether we have this COVID nineteen virus in our system or not and God uses this COVID-19 to test the people or his people whether they really love him they really believe in him uh, and for those who endure the test like in 1st Corinthians 11 uh, those that are proof after coming through trials and testing then they will be approved by God and so we have to go through the process of testing trials refinement and God is pruning us basically so that we may bear fruits and some studies one, one rather famous preacher mentioned about the study that he, he referred to uh, after 18 months I think he was referring to about 18 months I listened to the sermon about two months ago 
after eight, uh, 18 months of pa uh, pandemic, uh, he referred to a study just published survey that only a third remain true to their local church which means they faithfully attend the online services and when the church premises uh, premises reopen they faithfully return to church and worship with fellow uh, believers and that's quite remarkable uh, if you think of it uh, but I even share of a uh, vision you know is a vision because I think it has to be tested but I share that after I think six months after I received a vision about uh, a year ago maybe early this year uh, a year into the pandemic I received a vision um, that there's a canvas a dark canvas in the sky I saw many stars, many bright lights of stars shining in that large canvas blackness. So in, in the contrast of darkness or, or a black canvas, uh, the stars shone brightly. Then my spirit, uh, I, I can perhaps counting or not say counting, but estimating the number of stars it's like about 100 or more than 100 or just over 100 it's about 100 and then I had another vision of an, uh, another same black canvas and in that black canvas I saw just a few stars and in my spirit I thought or oh, maybe about 10 so um, and then I felt the spirit spoke to me and said that the, before the pandemic you have about 100 congregations in Kota Kinabalu that truly worship me. Let, let me just put this in context. Uh, I think there must be at least uh, 250 to 300 churches if you count all the denominations. So, so basically the Lord is saying that uh, only one third, only one third of the uh, churches that no, that really worship me in during the uh, uh, pre pre pandemic. So I think my estimation is that there are three hundred churches. You count all the denominations and so on. In Kota Kinabalu alone, that meet on a Sunday, but out of that three hundred. Only 100 are truly born again Christians that worship God. But then, after a year after the pandemic, that's why the Lord gave me the vision. Only 10% remains faithful. Only 10% are approved. And when I thought of it, whether it's just one third as a survey does, but God looks into the heart. It doesn't mean that you reopen your church, you do the Sunday service. Um, you are true believers. And God has shown me that after the testing and so on, there are only 10%. 90% have fallen. And I've met a lot of people that are very happy with just online services and they have no desire to meet together uh, and these people don't realize that meeting together is actually one of god's commandments i think hebrews 10 25 is very clear do not neglect the assembly of the saints and more so when you see the day approaches and basically the whole idea of church you can't do church by just staying at home. It's a gathering of believers, ecclesia. It's a local congregation. People meet at homes, in the temple precinct, before the temple was destroyed by the Romans uh, in the first century. 
and they gather together. It could be 20 people, it could be 200 people. Archaeological evidence tells us that in the second century, there are houses that have been renovated, uh, courtyards, rooms extended to fit easily 150 people. Uh, the series uh, in the Book of Acts, you know, there's about five volumes. I think one of the editors is uh, Richard Balcom and a few others. I forgot the uh, two or three other editors. Uh, that, that was published about 10 years ago, uh, perhaps even more than 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, perhaps. Um, so that is the situation of the church now. And to make it more interesting, with the double vaccination requirements to enter the premise, I think now we have a choice. I think that is in government overreach, although for good reason, you know, because government thinks that they're protecting their citizens from this COVID-19 infection and on the ground of public health uh, they make all kinds of uh, rules and regulations requirements or standard operating procedure most of which are good but if you really impact the church and I just conclude by citing this article I read from Kiwi Blog. It's quite a famous blog. Many, many Kiwis, different political persuasions, uh, read the blogs, and maybe tens of thousands of people um, every week uh, log into the blog. Uh, high readership. And he cited an article written by someone that says that the government um, hinders the Christian church from being Christian and this article talks about why the author was attracted to Christianity uh, to the church is that the church is open to all that's the first uh, I think uh, requirement and the author mentions that you know Jesus received all the outcasts the sick the lepers and so on I think it may be in other articles that now the unvaccinated are considered the modern day lepers being the outcast of today's society. Things have really changed. That's why I think Isaiah 50 to 53, the four chapters that I read this morning, especially 51, 52, even Jesus, man of sorrows, acquainted with sickness, our Lord himself. I don't think it's just when he was hanging on the cross it was a man that was acquainted with sickness, a man of sorrows. And now we say that only the healthy can enter the church. And we add the condition that only if you are dub doubly vaccinated, fully vaccinated. For me, I, I'm not convinced. My annual leave is coming to an end. I've taken six seven weeks to really wait on the lord to, to pray and this is my final week on my holiday and my, i may have to go for an extended holiday <laughs> if i'm not allowed back to the church hallelujah praise you lord thank you for listening keep the faith you who seek the lord seek after his righteousness do not fear the disgrace of man. Amen.